Hey everyone, what is up? It's Dean Soto, and uh, we're going to be doing some things differently over the next few years, maybe. I don't know. So, so this channel was originally the Online Empire Academy, and over the last few, um, how do I want to say it, last few, I'm actually going to see if I can move the text behind the main video. Oh, cool. Now it's behind my hand. It's crazy. I'm testing this out. Love it. Anyway, so uh, so you might have been a an Online Empire Academy subscriber. You might have seen that uh, things have been changing over the last few years, and it's a good thing. It's a good thing because what I want to do in these videos, I don't know what's going to happen with the Online Empire Academy YouTube page as, as far as um, the Online Empire Academy is concerned, but the cool thing is that you're going to benefit from years of experience. It's going to be, uh, I'm going to be sharing a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that has has allowed the Online Empire Academy, ProSulum, Freedom in Five Minutes, and a whole bunch of other businesses that I've had thrive. And this is going to be a place of sharing as much as I possibly can without it hurting my business in any way, but also helping you to grow in your business as well. So all that being said, why don't we get started with starting a business as a dad? So as of recording this, I have seven kids, and that is a lot of kids. <laughs> but as of recording this, I have seven kids, and they are all sustained through me, through my business, and that is something that has been going on since 2009. Okay, so where do we start? I want to start by reaching out to those prospective dads, those dads, those people who think that they have to have a full-time job or they have their wives have to work or um, they feel like they can't do what they have in their heart to do, which is to have their own business. And I'm going to give you the tips that I've had, that I had in order to get started so you can get started on the right path. Okay. So, where to begin? Well, so back in 2008, I was deployed to, uh, I was deployed overseas for Operation Iraqi Freedom. And I'd been in the reserves since 2001, and they got me right as I was about to go out. <laughs> oh, man, it was all right. So 2000. 2008 going into 2009, I found out that I was going to be gone for uh, about a year, year and a half. And the sad thing was that my wife and I had our first kid. And she, I want to say she was seven or eight months old at the time. And I had to break the news to my wife. And so I left around uh, April time frame. We got in country. And I had a really cool thing happen, actually. Really cool thing was I was going to be going home for Christmas. The sad thing is, and the sucky thing was, that about a month later, I found out that my daughter had a tumor in on one of her temples on her head, and and that tumor had to go because either way it was it was starting to ingrain itself in its skull, whether it was cancerous or not cancerous, it didn't didn't matter, and so it. It, it had to go. And so my boss was really cool. And he's like, Hey dude, you can, you can, we'll try and get you home now. Right. Well, can you, so you can be there with your daughter if, if that's what you want to do. So here I was stuck between this and this Christmas with the first Christmas with my daughter and going and being there for my daughter. Right. Do I choose Christmas? Do I choose going now? sucky place to be right and so I decided at that point that I never wanted to be in that position ever again that position sucked 
And so I decided to start my own business. I started, uh, I never thought I want, I never thought I would ever be an entrepreneur, but I got out of the, got out of the military and I'm like, screw this. I am done. I am, I am going to start my own business. And at the time I was working for a very large aerospace company and, uh, and I had not a single clue on what to do. Right. Well, Fast forward to now, that that decision completely changed my life. Um, as mentioned before, my entire family is sustained by my full-time business. But it didn't start off as a full-time business. It actually took about five years for me to launch. Not launch, but to, to get to where I am now, right? To get to where my business sustains my family. And it was five hard years. Lessons that I could have learned easy, more easily, but I didn't. But uh, these are these are the lessons that I want to share with you right now. Okay, so lesson number one. Lesson number one is, and this is not, so if you haven't started a business at all, if you have no idea where you're at right now, it's great. Even if you have started a business, it's going to be super, super helpful. Leverage what you have right now. So if you have a part-time job, if you have a full-time job, don't quit it. Don't quit. This is one thing that I'm so glad I did. My wife, my wife, oh, God bless her. She, she kept me from crashing and burning. Because we see all these heroes. We see these people who, <laughs> we see all these people who go and supposedly risk it all, right? And then they, they, have some hard times and finally they make it through and they make it to the millions and a lot of that and you know a good amount of time that actually does happen but a lot of times people just crash and burn i it's funny i was looking over my linkedin not too long ago and these people that when i first started my business when i first started my business these people who i whom i looked up to i looked up to them going, man, I want to be like them as entrepreneurs. They look like they have it all together and it looks like they're doing really well. A vast majority of them are now working at another corporate job. And it's because they took the leap of faith and crashed and burned. The ones who I know started their side business and, and, and kept their full-time job, they're the ones who have been much more successful. So don't, my, one of my biggest tips is don't leave your full-time job now. Don't. It's not worth it, okay? It sucks. Trust me, I hated my job. Uh, for the first five years, I loved my job. It was amazing and I had so many things. But after the last five years, literally the last five years, it got to be such a grind. There was, there was a glass ceiling. I wasn't going to be able to go move up. The only, only way I could really get a promotion was to move to another state, and I didn't want to do that. My wife didn't want to do that. It was just a horrible situation, right? And so, so number one is keep your full-time job. Number two is focus on sales, okay? So one of my favorite courses, uh, it was a course by Ramit Sethi, and I and I talk about this a lot in the online uh, online Empire Academy. I talked about this a lot. One of my favorite courses was his Earn One K course. That is the course that took me to where I was at, went from making nothing to actually making a decent amount of money. And one of the things is funny because he he even interviewed me, and and. I don't think it was he expected the answer, but one of the questions was that he had asked was what was the most what was your the most important thing in the course essentially it was something along that lines I don't remember exactly what it was, but there was this one guy who owned a design agency, and all he did was focus on sales. Now I hated sales. I'm like, I do not want to be a salesman. I just want to go on social media and show all the great things that I'm doing and what I can do for you and what I can do for whatever. <laughs> and, and someone's going to buy, right? 
I'm going to, I'm just going to get on all the social media stuff and I'm going to post pictures. I'm going to post funny memes. I'm going to post uh, thoughtful, inspirational quotes and I'm going to post this. I'm going to do all that. And I tried that for a long time and I got nowhere, absolutely nowhere. And I'm sure you've had friends who have started an MLM or have started some kind of business or something like that. And, and you were like, geez, like, gosh, this guy is, uh, this guy's got to find a new job or something like that. Right. I was doing that whole thing. Right. But this, so Ramit was interviewing in this course, he was interviewing this guy and he was talking about sales and he was talking about how people don't buy a drill. They buy a hole, right? So if they're buying a drill, if you're going in looking for a drill, they're, you don't really want the drill for the drill, right? You want it to be able to make holes or you want it, you want to be able to screw things in quickly. You want to be able to build tables or build something right with that drill. It's the result that you want. And that was a huge thing for me thinking, Oh, okay, well I'm delivering some kind of value. And as long as I'm delivering value, I don't have to feel like a dirty, greasy salesman. Right. And that's why with online empire Academy, you know, we were charging, charging, you know, six ninety seven for dream drop shipping, a couple thousand dollars for other things. Cause I truly believed in it. And in fact, the stuff that I sell now in my other businesses are much more expensive than that. And I don't have this feeling of like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe people are paying me that much money because they're getting a ton of value from it, a ton. Right. And so, so the focus on sales, I literally went from making $50, I, 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 want, I want to say it was like 50 to 150 to something like that, repairing computers. When I first started, <laughs> we literally went from there that to, it was like a $3,000 check for creating a server for a dental company that one of my friends owned. Right. And it all was because of sales. In fact, that particular, in that particular story. <clears throat> so my friend, he, he managed a dental little dental. They made these crowns. Uh, they, they, they made these crowns. And what they wanted to do is they wanted to be able to have a server here and a server in, in China that would automatically replicate all the data. And so that they can just print, they, they can send the, these, um, these kind of like drawings of, of molds of teeth so they can, they can very quickly print these out in these like 3d ceramic printers. So you literally, what are those called? Those crowns, like crowns and crowns in your teeth. Right. And so I'm like, he, so he asked me, Hey, do you think you would be able to do something like this? And I said, yeah, sure. Um, and he's like, well, how much would you charge? And I said, uh, well for you, you know, maybe like $20 an hour. And he's like, oh, okay. That uh, sounds good. All right. Well, we'll talk, man. I uh, appreciate you. And, and uh, yeah, well, I'll give you a call back. And I could just feel, I'm like, he's not going to call me back for this, right? That's a little cow lick right there. He's not going to call me back for this. There's no way, right? I, I can just feel it. So I actually called him back and I said, what did you think about, because this is part of the course. This is part of the, the whole selling and asking, like asking after you've either made a sale or not made a sale. Like, what do you think about, um, you know, what did you think about, my offer. And he said, well, it's too low. He said, I, like, I wouldn't, I'm not, I can't pay. Like it's you off you, you totally lowballed. And so it made me not trust you, even though you're my friend and maybe not trust you. And so I, I actually said, well, all right, then, uh, how about a hundred dollars an hour then? I said, well, I can do it for you and can, you buy the equipment and, and it's a hundred dollars per hour after that. And he's like, okay, deal. So twenty dollars an hour to a hundred dollars per hour, and it ended up being I, I think I profited off of that like fifteen hundred dollars, which is great. Fifty percent, you know, fifty uh, percent off of that is is not bad, right? So, uh, so learning to sell is number two, and focusing on sale, sales. Like literally it's the difference. Even now it's funny because I get trapped. Even when I'm creating these videos, I create these videos right here because I want to help people. I usually don't make anything. Uh, I make a few, uh, some ad sense off of it. 
some advertisements off uh, off of YouTube and so on. Uh, now that this is so now that the Online Empire Academy is gonna probably is, I'm gonna probably change it just to to Dean Soto or something like that just so I can share a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, there's not gonna be anything particular that I'm selling. I have other channels that I sell things on, and and those don't. I mean, they sometimes get a customer or two, which definitely brings an ROI because we sell things that are thousands of dollars a month. But, <clears throat> but even like with those things, I always get tempted. I always get tempted, you know, let me just create a ton of content, kind of content and content is great. Content is awesome. It helps out in so many ways, but everything, even now, everything comes from sales. Everything comes from getting in front of people, finding ways to get in front of people and making that one-on-one -on -one sale. In fact, I just made a, a sale. Was it yesterday? And then another guy who's going to be signing soon, um, but that was from a one-on-one -on -one call. I also had a speaking engagement, and that uh, and that led to some sales, right? So everything has to be focused on sales, right? What does your customer want? What can you provide to your customer? I see some people on LinkedIn that one guy in particular that is he's selling he he's doing all this content, but I don't from the way I can tell, I'm like, really, is there really a need for that? Like, are people going to need a guide for that thing? It's basically this guide for buying something that can be relatively expensive, but not that expensive to where they need a liaison for that. Like, you don't need a broker for this type of thing. So I'm looking at it going, really? Like, did you try and actually sell this to somebody? Testing through sales is the best. Like, if you can, if you can talk to 10 people and get someone to buy – then that's a good indicator that you can spend ads, uh, ad uh, money on advertising. You can create content, whatever it might be for that thing. But don't get trapped into just creating content. That's that's where it can be a pretty big dead end, right? So, so that is <laughs> that is uh, number two is focusing on sales. So number one is leverage what you have, which is your full-time job, part-time job, don't quit that to start something, right? It's basically you're getting paid to start a business and to test things out first. It's, it's awesome. And, and it's great because it also creates constraint, which is huge. Number two is, uh, is focusing on sales, right? Focusing on sales. Okay. And then number three so number three, this is probably the biggest, uh, so aside from sales, this is probably the biggest thing that you can do, and that is focusing on systems, focusing on systems. So systems, <clears throat> most people don't get systems, and a lot of new people who are starting out any type of business, they rush into it, including myself, <clears throat> including myself, rush in get clients, start doing work, and find that they're working 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 hours a week. When I first started out, so I was working at the large aerospace company, and during that time, I had a business client who, because, because of my sales technique, they were paying me $1,500 a month on retainer, and I was their IT guy. I would go in anytime they had a problem, I'd walk and walk in. But the problem was they had a lot of problems. And so I was leaving at lunchtime. Then after work, I would go and run down, uh, I'd run over to the, the company and fix their stuff. And then it'd be at lunchtime again the next day. And then after work again, and then sometimes it would be an emergency. So I'd have to say, Hey, uh, I'd have to take time off of my work. And and I got to where I was just killing myself. <laughs> it sucked. Um, and and I had to solve it in two ways. So the first way was I needed to find... So one is... I should have started off with this. One is find something that you can do online. Like something... I mean, that's the wave of the future right now. Something that you can do online or at least support online. So even if you're doing say IT or something like that, find a way to where you can support it remotely. They have they have services like house call, they have 
team viewer they have all of these things that you're let, you're able to use to remote into people's desktops and and solve their problems and things like that that's one big thing the other is document once you have that you can document processes you can document step by step how to do something and whether you are using it or you're hiring somebody and they're using that step-by-step -step process to fix something or to service something or to do something, whatever that service is, uh, you can, that documented process allows you to step away, right? And so that's really what a system is. A system, uh, so your iPhone, your iPhone is a system, right? Your iPhone can be a system. It's so it has little subsystems, it has little apps in it. And each app, you like it because it works, right? And it has, it has, it, you go to Instagram, it, it has the ability to take photos, it has the ability to do all those things. As long as that little subsystem works, and as long as the camera works on the phone, and as long as uh, the microphone and the speaker and all those different things work, the system as a whole, which is the iPhone, system as a whole will work, right? The system as a whole will work. And so what you do with your business is you document step-by-step step what's going on in that system, right? So now once it's documented, you can either hand it off to somebody or you can even give it to your client and say, hey, here, anytime you have this problem, this is all you have to do. You know, if, especially if you're dealing with older IT clients or older web development clients, hey, here's how you create a blog post for your blog. Here's how you create a page for your blog. Here's how you do this. And it's a step-by-step -step little procedure so they're not constantly bugging you because it can eat away so much time in your business. The more that you can develop systems, the better. Man, I was getting, I, 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 I would get, so I ended up moving over and starting doing WordPress development after a while. And even with that, I was like, this sucks because now I'm, I'm, doing i doing all the development work on my own i didn't even know really how to develop i did uh, just enough to be, get myself into trouble and stuff <laughs> but then um then i was like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna hire someone else someone who's a developer and then i created a system where i had the designer i had a designer partner who she did not like to sell i like to sell but she was great at lead generation and she was great with customers and, and getting the design done. So she would go out and she would network, get leads. I'd come in and sell, she would uh, sell, close the deal. She would then work with the customer. She, so we had a whole system. She would work with the customer, get the designs of all the, of the blogs, uh, of, of all the pages for the websites and so on and so forth. She would hand it to me. I would hand it to my developer and he knew the system. So then he would develop the thing and then let the person know and boom, 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 all done. It was freaking amazing because I was able to take what was, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 hours in a project and bring it literally my own time was about an hour, right? Because there was a system and so the more that you can make something into a system, the more that you can get yourself out of that situation so that you're not the bottleneck, the better. So those are the three things in starting a business. One, and, and we can talk about finding a niche, finding uh, something, uh, if finding a, a, a product or service, and comment on the video below uh, uh, on that, and I would love to do a video helping you to find your product and service. Uh, it might be a little bit more of a Q&A type stuff uh, because the, you really have to bring something out. But so number one is use, utilizing the resources you have right now. Don't quit your full-time job. Don't quit your part-time job. Just utilize whatever resource you have right now as you're starting a business. Number two, focus on sales. Huge focus on sales. Number three, focus on systems because that's going to get you out of it. So if you want to find, find a niche, we can talk about that next, uh, in, maybe in the next video. I would love to hear your comments below on one of these three things, any questions, comments, con uh, or anything like that. Please let me know in the comments below which one's your favorite and which one maybe that you need a little bit of help in. And I'd love to do a video on that as well. So this is Dean Soto, and I'm excited to share a lot of this stuff. This is li literally going to be inside stuff. I'll try and go into as much detail as possible, help you get, help you get going. 
you know, being a dad of being a dad of seven and probably not, that's probably not going to be the end and being fully self-sufficient is a really amazing and fun thing. And I want other people to be able to do that as well. Whether you're a dad of seven, eight, nine, ten, or one, or not at all, or your mom, stay at home mom, whatever, I'd love to help you. So it's going to be doing a lot more of these videos. So this is Dean Soto and I'll check you out in the next video.